Hey everyone! I'm sure that most of you are probably familiar with the children's folktale, The Emperor's New Clothes, but for the few of you that have never heard about this story before, I'll just offer a brief summary because I think that it perfectly encapsulates the deceitful situation that America seems to be collectively indulging in at the moment. Two swindlers arrive at the capital city of an emperor who spends lavishly on clothing at the expense of state matters. Posing as weavers, they offer to supply him with magnificent clothes that are invisible to those who are stupid or incompetent. The emperor hires them and they set up looms and go to work. A succession of officials and then the emperor himself visit them to check their progress. Each sees that the looms are empty, but pretends otherwise to avoid being thought a fool. Finally, the weavers report that the emperor's suit is finished. They mime dressing him and he sets off in a procession before the whole city. The townsfolk uncomfortably go along with the pretense, not wanting to appear inept or stupid, until a child child blurts out that the emperor is wearing nothing at all. The people then realize that everyone has been fooled. Although startled, the emperor continues the procession, walking more proudly than ever. The reason that this story perfectly encapsulates the current state of America is because millions of Americans seem to recognize that the narrative that the left is peddling is false, that it's riddled with colossal lies. However, despite the fact that these lies are inflicting indescribable damage on our country, many of us are choosing to keep silent or even to publicly agree with the lies out of fear of societal backlash, shaming, and cancel culture. The coronavirus is a deadly global threat, we're told. People aren't allowed to open their businesses in order to pay their rent and to put food on the table for themselves and their families. They can't attend the funerals or weddings of their loved ones, and they can't visit their sick loved ones in the hospital either. But meanwhile, Black Lives Matter and Antifa are given free rain to take to the streets by the thousands in the midst of this pandemic, and they are defended by the mainstream even as they violently loot, commit arson, physical assault, and murder. We're also told that racism and discrimination is bad against all racial groups except when it comes to white people. White people are allowed to be dehumanized and demonized, and as punishment for speaking out against this inhumane treatment, we are labeled white nationalists, white supremacists, and Nazis. We're also told that black Americans are disproportionately targeted, even though the data proves the opposite. If you haven't yet seen this data, I'll link the video in which I present it in the description. And meanwhile, some of the provably largest issues in the black community are ignored, such as fatherless homes and black on black crime. We're also told that political violence is inexcusable, that right-wing violence is the biggest threat warranting mass monitoring and crackdowns, despite the fact that we've seen countless acts of political leftist violence over the past few months. However, instead of having any semblance of principles, instead of maintaining the position that violence is immoral, the left ignores this violence, twists it, and even sometimes promotes it when it's committed by their own side. Political violence is immoral regardless of whether it's committed by the right or the left. It should never be defended, excused, or encouraged. When I was a student back in grade school, my teachers often used to refer to America using the common descriptions that many of us heard, that America was the land of opportunity, America was the land of the free, and the home of the brave. At the time, I believed these words wholeheartedly, but that was back then, and this is now. Sure, there still is a lot of opportunity, however, it's beginning to increasingly depend on where you fall in the victim hierarchy, or whether or not you have the quote-unquote correct political beliefs. And sure, there's still a lot of freedom, however, it only seems to be freedom for those who submit to the ruling ideology. For everyone else, freedom seems to be merely a simulation. Behave yourself, keep in line, and the simulation will continue, even until the end of your life. However, should you ever decide to start asking the wrong questions, or worse, challenging these questions and sharing their answers with others, the hammer comes down. As for America being the home of the brave, sure, there are plenty of brave people in every every state and at every level. Although, I'm not sure that I would say that the majority of Americans are brave. This of course can change, however, at the moment it doesn't seem to be the case. 
If it were the case, we would be seeing the majority of Americans taking a stand. Losing our jobs and our reputations would be but a small price to pay if it meant saving our countries, not only for ourselves, but for our children and for future generations. But sadly, most of us seem to be too afraid. And in not wanting to confront this fear, we lie to ourselves, telling ourselves that our civic duty merely extends to casting a vote during election year, that Donald Trump or some other politician will single-handedly save our country. Country. But the truth is that America isn't the same country that it used to be. It's deteriorating more and more by the day. A future of freedom for ourselves and our loved ones isn't guaranteed. We can lose our freedoms, and all of us, no matter where we live, can lose our countries. We can, in fact, have to suffer an extremely bleak and totalitarian period within our lifetimes. And I think that the sooner we admit this, the better, because this is the first step towards taking a stand. In a way, we all have to be like the little child in the emperor's new clothes, who was both brave and truthful enough to call out the lies. We can't measure the truth according to the number of people who believe in something. Not to mention, the more people we have called calling out the lies, the more comfortable others will feel in joining them. That said, it's totally understandable why few would want to be the person who's running at the head of the crowd, because this is a role that's extremely difficult, it comes with a ton of responsibility, and it makes you a target. But we do need leaders. While it can sometimes feel like we're just spectators watching some kind of freakish film unfold due to the fact that much of the information we receive comes from the internet, we are not in fact in a movie. What's happening now in America is real. It's deeply affecting our states, our cities, and our towns. The good news is that neither victory nor defeat is some kind of destined fate. Each one of us has the power to affect and change the outcome. In the end, what happens to our country truly is up to us. Thank Thank you so much for watching everyone. I just wanted to mention super quick that I recently started a Telegram channel, so if you'd like to follow me there, I'll link in the description. I also have a BitChute and a Parlay account. I think it might be a good idea to subscribe to me on alternative platforms at the moment just because there's wave after wave of censorship, it just keeps coming and you never know when I'll be next. But anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you soon.